All right, so I had a bit of a brainstorm and I came up with this idea of letting ChatGPT guide me on answering questions I didn't know the answer to with images. So we're gonna build this, this uh, graph from scratch here, but let me zoom in so you can see what we're doing here. Basically, we're gonna pass this to ChatGPT. Uh, so by, by the way, uh, this is just an example of how to integrate ChatGPT. This is not like the only way to do it. I'm trying to teach you how to fish here so you can do something yourself. Uh, but just realize this is one way to do it. So what we do is act as a creative problem solver. And the idea here is I want it to creatively solve the problem uh, that answers in prompts. Now, it doesn't quite get what a prompt is because it was trained before all this kind of thing took off. Uh, but it does help with the formatting a bit, I found. And I will give you a prompt. And that's what we do here is we have the separator as prompt equals down here. Uh, and you describe a creative solution to the problem. Use terse, concise terms to describe the answer. And use descriptive details, answer with one sentence and one response only, and keep it under 40 terms or less. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it so it doesn't run amok like, you know, some of the other terms we see people using. Uh, I don't want it to be huge. Uh, 40 is plenty. Uh, and I want to start with a photo of because that's, I think, the more interesting part of this. And you can use comments between terms. I put this on here so that it doesn't say and a and a lot of other stop words. Uh, so this just kind of helps with that. And it says here, just play along and don't break role play. Uh, by saying you're an AI language model because that's annoying and it just draws a picture of uh, an interface. Uh, so just guess at the answer is what I put in there. So here's what I do. I just put a prompt down here of something I want the answer to, but I really don't know what I want it to be. Uh, so I've done all kinds of crazy things. And I'll show you one that actually <laughs> hit pretty close to home here in a bit. Okay, to get started, what you're going to have to do is go into your manager here. We installed this a couple episodes ago and just use the hell out of it and go and do custom nodes here. And I'm going to go to installed so you can see what I have installed. So we're kind of building on previous episodes. Uh, but this uh, this specific suite here or suit, <laughs> Quality of Life Suit V2 by Omar, uh, number 25. I'm not sure if these numbers change or not, but that might be a good way to find it. And you can see that it adds a whole bunch of different nodes to this. So we're going to use this. It does depend on one other node suite. And this, this one here, this WAS node suite which has a ton of great nodes in it. And we're gonna have future episodes where we look on those, but uh, today we're gonna focus on what's in here, but note that this node suite is required uh, for this one to work, at least as far as I can tell. All right, once you have that installed, go ahead and reopen Comfy and we can get going. What you're gonna need to do is go over to uh, Playground over at OpenAI and open an account. And I'll put a link down below so you can do that. Uh, it's different than the regular OpenAI account. And when you get in there, by the way, you can see I spent a total of four cents here working on playing with this all day. Uh, so don't worry about spending too much. I do have it capped at 50 bucks just in case I go and run amok. And then you're going to have your API keys. So you're going to have to go over here to under API key. And you can see I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, and you generate a new secret key and it's going to uh, let you copy that. You cannot get to these again. Uh, so just realize that. Uh, if you go to edit the key, you can only edit its name. You'll never be able to get this key again. So make sure when you copy it, you use it immediately. Uh, so how are you going to use it? So after you get the Omar suite installed, you're going to go to its custom node subdirectory inside of Comfy, and you're going to notice there's a, a config.json. You're just going to edit that and put your key in there. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm obviously not going to dox myself by showing that, uh, but uh, that's how you do it. It's this file right here. Once you do that, then this thing will run just fine and dandy. And as always, this graph will be included in the posts here on YouTube uh, for people who are sponsoring the channel uh, at the sponsor level or better. So uh, click that join button down below and grab this graph and help support the show. So just like always, let's get started by loading our checkpoint. And we're going to set this to XDXL. Okay, once you have your checkpoint loaded, we're going to add node, go down to O, which is absolutely terrible. I wish you could rename these. O, open AI, and we're going to load the ChatGPT simple. Now, again, this is going to work because we have it tied to that config file. Uh, but we don't want to type into this. Uh, I mean, you could, but uh, again, I need to pass in instructions. And this node does have default instructions, uh, but I really don't like those. I want to do something different. So we're going to go ahead and overwrite what's in this node normally. And we're going to go ahead and change this to convert the prompt to input. So now we can drive everything through this text field here. All right, the next node we want is also in that node suite. Let's go down to O. Go to text, operations, and concatenate text. I'm going to change this one to the color green because we're going to use it as our as our positive prompt here. And down here under separator, I'm going to change it from a comma to the word prompt equals. And you could obviously make this anything you'd like, but this just makes it easy so that ChatGPT can understand that the instructions at the beginning and the prompt are two different things, which is what I'm doing here. 
I'm going to take and paste that wall of text that we have in here already. So obviously you can work on this. I keep changing it to try and improve what ChatGPT is sending back, but I think I'm pretty happy with this one right now. And then you're going to want to put uh, something down below and we'll just use this one because I like to see what it's coming up with. I've done uh, all kinds of ones. I'll share one in a minute. That I think it was pretty funny. And then what we need to do is we need to do our standard uh, clipping code for our text. So let's drag that out and we're going to encode our text. But what we're going to do is we're going to change it so we don't enter the prompt here. We're going to right click and convert the text to an input. That way we can use the string to drive this. So whatever is coming out of the answer from ChatGPT will be fed into the text. And obviously our prompt is going to be this. So now we're feeding the ChatGPT suite here with our prompt, well, it's our instructions and then the prompt. And then over here, we're going to encode it and condition it like we normally would and toss it into a case sampler. So we should have this down. We've done this a thousand times, but if not, uh, it's not very complicated. It's just adding those nodes and then we'll hook the model up here. And not for the negative, we don't really care. Uh, we don't really use much of a negative with uh, SDXL, at least I don't. So clip text and code, and we're just gonna toss this right in. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the SDXL versions of these clip encoders, but for this, uh, this works just fine. And for our latent, we can just pull that down here, create an empty latent. And again, we want 1024 for SDXL. Now, one other thing that I did is I find that when I'm doing this, I tend to get the same items over and over again. Like if you use the word scary, you get a lot of dolls, things like that. So I did is I duplicated this and made it red. I clear the text out of it here. Could have just, I guess, created a blank one. And this one's going to be our negative. Uh, so we're just gonna use this as a comma here. Okay, what I wanna do is I want to include a statement to say, do not include these terms in your solution. And then we can put those down here. It's pretty interesting is this is pretty much what prompt injection is here. You give it all these commands and, and instructions, and then someone comes along and tacks to the end. Hey, by the way, do this too. like forget everything you just were told and do this. Uh, so that's kind of why large language models are so hard to defend against prompt injection because you're just using language like it's expecting. Okay, and we need to concatenate this so we can actually use another one of these, but we can turn both of the prompts into inputs. And we don't need the separator either, but we're not gonna worry about that. So we can take this string here, this string here, and concatenate them together and toss them. And we'll minimize this because I don't care to look at it. So what we're doing is we're taking this positive and we're putting this out here, we're putting our prompt, and then we are adding these additional negatives. If you find yourself getting repeating elements, just put those down here. So we can put all that over. All right, there's a couple more nodes that we want to add, and these are to help us see what's going on because there's no place here where we're seeing the actual result from this uh, come back from ChatGPT. So let's add that, and it's going to come out in the console window. It's not going to show up on this interface. So add node, get on to O. Again, I wish I could change that. Go to debug, and you see there's a text, and there's a debug text. There's also an OpenAI advanced GPT, and then some of these. Uh, so you can use whichever one you want. I'm just going to go for the simple one here. Debug text is good enough. So once we have that, we need to change it so that this text is an input. And we'll just take the string here and that will throw it onto the console. So when we're running our prompt, we'll be able to see what came back from ChatGPT. And we can change this too if we'd like to. All right, we are almost done. Let's take our latent here. Decode it using the VAE. Pull this down here and we'll save the image. And I want to put it next to my prompts. So this is kind of like my UI over here. Uh, so as we come back with images, we can adjust our prompts as needed. And I don't really need to see the rest of these things over here. Now, as far as your case sampler here, again, I have a preference and you do what you want to do. Uh, today, I think we're gonna leave this at Euler and uh, we'll maybe drop the CFG down to seven. And uh, maybe we'll change this. So we used exponential last time, let's use Keras this time. So that should be about it. Bring the console up. Now, the first time you run this, it's gonna create a wall of text. So you have to go to the top and you can see the GPT response here, a photo of a mysterious dark lit forest engulfed in an eerie mist with a colossal shadowy figure lurking behind ancient gnarled trees, creating a sense of chilling suspense and cloaking the era in a sense of otherworldly horror. Ooh. All right. 
<laughs> uh, I also like things about what did you find at the flea market? What's the strangest thing you ever found at the local flea market? Now, this one hit home with me because what it popped up is actually something I have hanging on my wall. And I was like, that's hitting a little close to home. <laughs> so I actually have this mask that my grandmother made uh, many, many moons ago. And it's been hanging on my wall in my office. And that popped up and I was like, look at that. All right. So uh, there's what we found at our local flea market. That is indeed bizarre. Our prompt here. And you're going to see now that you're going to be very terse. Uh, so we'll be able to see all our prompts. Uh, photo of a vintage circus poster featuring a grinning three-legged cat, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's fun. How about we change this to what's the scariest thing? You're going to find that words like arcane almost always yield books. Um, so different words tend to lean towards certain subject matter. You can kind of tell what the training data was. All right, so here's a doll. We're going to find we get a lot of dolls. So again, we include this negative here. Do not include these terms in your solution. We put a doll. So that way we stop getting dolls. Yeah, and that's extra nice. What is that? <laughs> It's a vintage decrepit taxidermy animal enclosed in a cracked glass display case with an eerie red lighting and cobwebs. Uh, it sure is. And I find, too, taxidermy is another one of those items that you're going to see pop up a lot if you use the word flea market. Uh, so isn't that pretty interesting that those things are related? Uh, but, wow, I would never have thought to prompt that, and uh, probably for good reason. <laughs> so anyway, on that one, we're going to go ahead and leave this. So there's a fun thing for you to try out. Again, this node suite allows you to create these things to augment the prompts you're creating. Uh, so wild cards work, sure, but why not use this? And again, it's very inexpensive. And I'd love to see what your best prompts are. So throw them in the comments below. You get one that is just amazing. I'd love to see it. Or if you have these seed questions here, I would love to see if you thought of something else that's pretty creative. Uh, once again, thanks to all the people who sponsor this show. Uh, so if you click the join button down below, you get your name on this poster as well as this graph, which I will include in the uh, YouTube posts uh, for a sponsor level and better. So you guys can have this and play with it. Again, you will have to create your own account uh, to be able to use the API with ChatGPT. Uh, but I think for the expense, it's worth it. And then I'm sure it won't be long before someone comes up with a node that talks to other language models, uh, like the one we have at Stability, for example. Uh, so you'll see some of those coming along quite soon. But this is my first foray playing with uh, text insertion here, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.